My dear sisters and brothers in Christ, truly, each day is a gift from our Lord. Each, lo- each day that we celebrate life is a gift from Him to praise Him, to honor Him, to serve Him. Let us now bow our heads in prayer and pray. Lord, we thank You so much for the gift of life You've given to each of us, the opportunities You've given us to serve You. Lord, help us each day to see that each life is valuable because it is a gift from You. Help us to use our lives to honor You. Lord, forgive us for the times when we are selfish, self-centered, prideful, and instead are focused on ourselves. Help us instead always turn to you, that you may be the center of our hearts and lives. This we pray in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. So what is most valuable to you? Think about it for a second. What is most valuable to you? Some people, it's, maybe it's their car. Some people, you see them out there on Saturday during the day, they're checking every last spot, making sure it's perfectly polished, that there's no, uh, no spot that is left uh, untouched. For some people, it's, their, it's their, their time. They value their time so much because they have so little free time. So they want to guard it and protect it and make sure no one takes that free time. Some people, it's money, right? Some people, they, they, they have accumulated a great deal of money, possessions. They value that greatly and they hold on to it. Some people, it's family. They love their family. They're willing to give life and limb for their son, their daughter, for for their parents, for whomever. What about you? What is most valuable to you? Fifth commandment shows us what's most valuable to God. God has given each of us life. And when we see in the fifth commandment, you shall not kill. We see that God values each life because he has created life. In fact, we go all the way back to the beginning. And as Sean was talking about with the kids, and I promise, we didn't actually uh, talk together beforehand, but God gave us his imagio Dei, his image. He put his image on our hearts. Now, that doesn't mean that we all look just like God if we took out the family photo album that, oh, look, you have that dimple just like God does. No, what it's talking about there is the fact that when we see people, when we're able to reason, we're able to recognize beauty, we're able to look around God's creation, and we're able to know what is right. Because in the beginning, Adam and Eve knew what was right. Remember what the servant said to them. You shall know right from wrong. And so they knew what was right. That's what it means to have the image of God. And God valued life so much that he gave each of us that image. And so we have this commandment, you shall not kill. The fifth commandment that shows us that our lives are valuable to God. But you know, oftentimes, that commandment, it actually should be, you shall not murder. Because you read through the Old Testament, and over and over again, the word that's used, the, old, the Hebrew word that's used there, it actually is often translated slay or to murder. So a very intentional attitude. So we should be reading, you shall not murder. And even as, if you read our gospel lesson, what did Jesus say when he quoted it? He didn't say, you shall not kill. What did he say? You shall not murder. It has been said of old, right? And so when you think about that, And at first blush, it may not seem like this is a significant difference. And maybe you're saying to yourself, well, who cares? Well, it is significant. Because if you read through the Old Testament, time and again, God gives the people of God the command to kill, to take life. If you read the Torah, the first five books, you see where God says that we are able to defend our own life. Self-defense, right? That if if we are being robbed, actually, is the example. And the robber should, should die as we're defending our property. Well, then... That, that, that is not on your head. Or last week we read from Romans chapter 13. And what right did God give to the state? To carry the sword. And so we see that at times that, well, killing is not certainly the desire of God. There are occasions where it does happen. But murder, on the other hand, murder is a whole different story. Because murder has a certain difference, a malice, a certain intent in the heart. Killing, if you're a soldier, you have to do that. You have to carry out the command. Luther wrote this piece uh, some time ago, of course, since he's been deceased for almost 500 years. Uh, He wrote this piece, Whether Soldiers Too Can Be Saved. And in that, he addressed the question of how many lives does a soldier take in his time serving? For some soldiers, they may never take a single life. But some soldiers will take many lives, or, or sailors or airmen. And Luther says that they are carrying out their duty faithfully that they are carrying out the will of the state. So they are not responsible for those lives, but rather the state is. 
So again, we get back to the question of, well, what about you shall not murder? Jesus, instead of just talking about a physical thing, murder being a physical thing, in Matthew chapter 5, he forces us to look at our hearts. You've heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council. And whoever says, you fool, will be liable to the hell of fire. So maybe when you first hear this commandment, as Sean was standing up here, you, 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 maybe you think to yourself, well, you shall not murder. Great. That's one commandment I can check off the list. Wipe the sweat off our brow. Move right along. Pastor, let's go. Time for communion. Except for Jesus forces us to confront our hearts. He forces us, instead of looking at murder as simply a, a physical thing, to taking of life of someone else, but the very value that we place on a life. And this is important that you understand that. Because if you leave with forgetting everything else, remember this. That all life is valuable because God values life. But the question you have to ask yourself is, do you value life as God values life? Do you look at your neighbor, neighbor and care for them the way God cares for them? Or are there occasions where maybe you've not murdered someone, but you felt like you were going to strangle them? Where you felt that anger welling up within you? And you knew that it was no way righteous anger. You could feel it in your belly. You felt the tightness in your body. And all you wanted to do was clench your fists. And A lot of us have been there, if not all of us, haven't we? We felt those, that anger, and we knew it was in no way righteous. Because we wanted revenge. We wanted to get back at the person who hurt us. And so the anger that we had, it was, we were going to carry it out and maybe not murder a person, but we wanted to get, have them get their comeuppance. We wanted to make sure that they got what they deserved. And, of course, we would judge them. We knew what they deserved because we're the ultimate judge when it comes to these situations, right? Right? Amazing, isn't it? Jesus forces us to look at our heart. And all of a sudden we realize that this commandment's not so easy to keep after all because we know that there are times where we've let our anger overwhelm us where there's times where we've, where we've not wanted what is best for someone else, where we've wanted even evil on other people. Back to the second commandment, Paul talked about cursing, right? Are there times where you've said to somebody that you'd rather them go somewhere south of here, if you know what I mean? No. That's not, that's not the attitude we should have as the people of God. And that is a breaking of the fifth commandment. Luther takes it a step further even. And he says that not only is the fifth commandment about what we should not do, but he says it's about what we should do. How many of you stand up for others who are in trouble? Defend those who are less fortunate than you are? How many of you are, uh, maybe some of you, you're still in school or in high school and you see someone else getting picked on? How many of you take the time to stand up for them and defend them? And I'm not just talking about someone who's throwing punches. I'm talking about someone who's getting bullied by words. Or what about in the workplace? How many of you defend those who are getting, being gossiped about or insulted? Luther takes this commandment a step further, and it's what we should be doing, not just what we should not be doing. Now you might say, well, let each person handle their own thing. God helps those who help themselves. Did you know that's not even in the Bible? And yet a lot of people quote it as though it is. That actual truth is, God says he helps the helpless, Isaiah chapter 25. He's the God of the widow and the orphan. He's the God who cares so deeply about each and every life that he sent his one and only son for our lives so that we might be saved. God helps the helpless. God cares for the less fortunate. God values all life because he has created it. You know, this last week, and I really don't want to get political here, so I'm trying to remain apolitical. But this last week, many of you, you saw the news, didn't you? From one end of the country to the other, we heard about shootings uh, one way or the other, and, and it's awful, isn't it? It reminds us of the sinful, sin-filled world we live in. It reminds us of the way that people so easily devalue life. 
There's people who wear shirts and don shirts that say black lives let matter. There's people who hold up pick up picket signs and they say blue lives let matter. Well, God says all lives matter. God says that every single life matters. It doesn't matter if that life is a blue life or a black life or a white life or a yellow life or a purple polka dotted life. God created that life. He gave that being. In the beginning, he breathed the Ruach, his spirit, right into that life. And that is why that life is valuable. And I don't mean to undermine any one of those groups because I know each of those groups is hurting. I know that those who are in each of those camps, that they're struggling and they're wrestling with the loss of loved ones, people they care about. But dear people of God, don't let it get political. Instead, look at each life, each and every life, as a gift from God. Whether that the skin color matches yours or not, that person is someone God made. That person is someone God uniquely and wonderfully shaped who he gave a personality that is not, maybe not anywhere near yours. But God made them. And we live in a world that so easily devalues life. Instead, lift up life. Defend life. Speak for the lives of those who are less fortunate. Because that is who our God is. He is a God who loves life, who cares so dearly for life, that he sent his only son for you. For you. He gave his son's life because he valued yours so greatly. Now sometimes there's people who, they, they don't appreciate that. They don't care so much about that. But God never stops caring, never stops loving, never stops valuing your life. And that's what the fifth commandment reminds us of. What does God value most in this world? You. Because he created you. He gave life to you. And he gave you hope and promise. The promise that one day, that not only will we have life on this earth, but that we would have eternal life. Because he gave his life for us, we would have eternal life with him forever. That's the hope we cling to today. That's the promise we hold on to. That's what we look forward to. So as you remember that command, you shall not murder, may you value each life. Whether it's the person on the corner, the child in your arms, your coworker a family member. Remember that person is a child of God, uniquely and wonderfully created, who is valuable to God. Amen. Please bow your heads and pray with me. Oh Lord, we thank you so much for the life that you have given to each of us. We thank you, O oh Lord, that you have knit us together in the womb and that you have formed us uniquely and wonderfully in ways that are indescribable. Lord, we pray that we would recognize in others too that you have uniquely and wonderfully made them. At times, Lord, we allow our anger to overcome us, our frustrations, our, 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 even our hate sometimes. Lord, we bring those to your cross and help us instead to replace that anger with forgiveness, that hate with love, Help us instead bring those frustrations to you and, and, and know your peace. Forgive us for, the, for that anger and hate and rage. And let us value life as you do. We thank you, O Lord, that because of your son Jesus, we do have life. And we have life to the fullest. May we live each day of our lives in ways that honor you and glorify your name. This we pray in the most powerful name of Jesus. Amen.